Hey y'all, Kentucky Farmer here, and today we are back on the Westbridge Hills map in my test game for my 10th video about course play. In this video, we're going to talk about how to set up some advanced field work mode courses, where we're going to use multiple pieces of equipment to collectively work as one large piece of equipment. If you're new to course play and you missed the first nine videos, you might want to go back and start from the beginning. There's a link in the description to my course play tutorial playlist. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to jump in this first tractor over here. We're going to open up course play. Now this is a video I've been pretty excited to make. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to make a course play tutorial. I have seen many videos online where people talk about how to do this and I have yet to see one actually do it correctly. So if you don't watch any of my other course play videos, make sure you watch this one. Uh, this is a really, really handy technique. If done correctly, can be a huge time saver on some of the bigger maps where you've got really large fields that you want to get uh, work done in them quickly. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we're in field work mode. And then we're going to come over here. We're going to click the generate course button. Now, one of the things we want to check here is the working width of these implements. So, if we go ahead and start this tractor, and then we unfold our plow. Well, the first thing I want to actually do here, we're going to hop into the store. And we're going to look at this plow in the store, and if you look, it says that this is a 6 meter working with the plow. This is not correct. <laughs> so if we come back over here and we tell course play to auto compute the size of our implement, it thinks it's 4.4 meters. That's not quite correct either. I found it's pretty much in between. So I'm going to go ahead and set this at 5 meters. Now that's how you would set it up if you were just going to run the one implement, but we're not going to run one. We're going to run five. So really, our working width is going to be five times five, which is 25 meters. So to get up to 25 meters, I'm going to use the middle scroll wheel on my mouse because we can scroll a lot faster than using the plus minus symbols. And I'm going to scroll all the way up here to 25 meters. Now we're working in field 15 and we're starting at the north west corner and we're gonna head south so again that was field 15 northwest corner heading south and we don't really need to return to the first waypoint so we can leave that deactivated and we're also not going to worry about creating a headland these fields are uh, They've, they've got enough room on either side for the tractors to turn around. So we're going to go ahead and generate that course. And now if we look over here, you can see there's the starting point. But this tractor's all the way over here. So if we were to start this right now, he would actually shoot off to the left and drive up there. And all of these tractors, if we were to start this course, would drive down that one center lane. They wouldn't actually spread out. So in order to get them to spread out, we have to come over here into the driver settings and we need to do a lane offset. Now, I've already done this a couple times with these tractors and so some of these are already going to be set up. This one over here is set to 10 meters right. Uh, the way that you get the offset is when you're working with an odd number like this the center tractor will have no offset the center tractor will follow the course as generated but the tractors on either side will need to be offset their working width to the right or the left plus their number or multiplied by their number so let's hop over to this tractor here, no, nope, not that one, this tractor here, there we go, we'll open up course play again, and this time we're going to come back over here and we're going to copy the course 
of the smart tracks that's right next to it. So now we've got the same course loaded. And if you notice, this one is set at five meters right. So this tractor here, the one that's in the middle, if you think about it, the very middle of this tractor is going up and down that course. So half of it is on the left and half of it is on the right. The middle of this guy has half of it on the left and half of it on the right. So from the middle of this guy to the middle of this guy is five meters, right? It's equivalent to having one tractor there. And the same thing goes for here. From the halfway point of this guy to the halfway point of this guy is the equivalent of one whole tractor, so that's five meters. So this five meters plus this five meters means that this one needs to be at five and this one needs to be at 10. So this is 10 meters right, five meters right. This guy here, we'll go ahead and get him started. And we'll copy the same course. It doesn't matter which one you copy it from. Once it's copied, they're all going to run the same course. And he has no lane offset. This guy over here. We're going to copy his course. And again, he is going to be five meters to the left. It's the same principle. We've got zero is in the middle. We've got 2.5 meters here, plus the 2.5 meters to get to the middle of this guy. It's 5 meters. So he's 5 meters left because he's to the left of the middle tractor. We're going to come back down here to our last guy. going to copy that course and he's 10 meters to the left now here is the part where this gets interesting you'll see a lot of videos where people mention symmetric lane change basically what symmetric lane change means is that when this tractor here who is going to be, you know what, one more thing I'm going to do to help visualize this. We're actually going to turn on all the waypoints. So, he is going to basically go up between these two rows of waypoints. And then he is going to make, without symmetric lane change turned on, if you ran this in the default mode, he would stay on the left as he went south, and then when he turned to come back north, he would still be on the left, which means he would have to make an incredibly sharp turn at the end of this row to double back and come back up this way. I don't know if you've used these plows before. These do not turn sharply. These need a really big turning radius in order to work correctly. So by using symmetric lane change, what happens is when this guy goes down, he's on the left side of this row and he'll switch to then be on the right side of that row. So he basically gets to make a 20 meter radius because he gets to skip four lanes at five meters each lane. And ditto for all of the rest of the tractors, right? So every tractor now is going to have a 20 meter turning radius by using symmetric lane change. So we'll just double check that he has symmetric lane change activated. He has it activated. The middle one doesn't need to have it activated because the middle one always just follows the middle course. This guy has it activated and this guy has it activated. Now, here's the other interesting part. If we send this tractor first, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one, when that tractor turns, it's going to come down, it's gonna come down 
the left side of this next lane as it comes back north, this guy will still be going down the left side of this lane as he goes south. And what's going to happen is the two are actually going to meet somewhere at the end of this field and collide. And this is where most people get confused about this feature. They think, uh oh, if we set up too many tractors and we don't give them enough spacing, they're all going to start to collide at the end of the field. That's not true. If you use symmetric lane change, start your inside tractor first. Since he's inside and they're all making the same turning radius, you can literally have these guys staggered by just a few feet and they will always stay separated. As long as none of them come to a stop for any reason, they'll always maintain their separation. So let's go ahead and get this started and then we'll follow along so that you can see what I'm talking about. So for each one of these, we're just going to tell it to start at the first waypoint, drive the course, first waypoint, drive course, first waypoint, drive course, first waypoint, drive course, first waypoint, drive course. All right, so now if we zoom out, we can watch these guys head down the field. And you can see they're all pretty tightly packed together here. And at five meters a piece, we've got good coverage on the field. We're not merely missing any spots here. Now one of the neat things about course play is that it handles a lot of your tool workings for you. So with these plows, uh, when you get to the end of the field before you turn around and come back the other direction, you're technically supposed to flip them over. Um, it really doesn't make a huge difference when you're using them in practice, but in reality you, you should flip them. So when course play gets to the end, you'll see it lift the plow and the plows will start to rotate and then they'll drop them once they get back into the field. Now with the setup you'll have a relatively clean headland but it's not going to be perfect and so a lot of times what I'll do is after I've had them all go over the field we'll come back with one and just do two passes by hand at the end of the field. And because of the way course play does headlands as a circle, um, telling it to do a headland really doesn't help because you have those corners that wind up getting missed anyway. So now watch. He's going to skip four lanes and then go. And the next tractor is going to skip four lanes and then go. And then the next one's going to skip four lanes and then go. And they get a little bit stuck in traffic in the sense that they're... Um, they're seeing the tractor in front of them and they're waiting for it to go but it's not stuck in traffic as in they're colliding and you have to go free them up they'll eventually all work their way around there you could give them a little bit more spacing and it would prevent that from happening but if you notice after that first corner they're already spaced out a little bit so on the next corner it's less likely that they're going to have issues like that so then this guy here is basically filling in the remainder and you can see how his plow is kind of overlapping with that one so if we didn't use symmetric lane change while he was going down here and the first one was coming up they would have collided So I'm just going to go ahead and follow this middle tractor and we'll zoom out and I will fast forward as the rest of the work is done here.
So here is the one problem with course play is that it does these remainder rows at the end and you'll wind up getting a whole bunch of tractors stuck in traffic. Uh, so a couple of these guys are basically done. We're going to go ahead and pull this guy off. Alright, so our first tractor here has reached its reached the end of the course. So we can stop him, pull him off. Alright, so there you have it. That was five tractors working as basically one giant plow. So I think we did that in basically 30 minutes with five of them. So if we were using only one, you know, that would have been over two hours worth of work to plow that one field. So you can see how this can kind of come in handy, uh, especially when you get on bigger maps, uh, like some of the 4X maps that are available will have just absolutely massive fields that could take, you know, <laughs> the better part of a, like a literal day of gameplay just to plow one of the fields. So by running multiple pieces of equipment on it, uh, you can see how that will speed up the process, but then also free you up to go do other stuff while it's doing its work. And you can see how minimal our intervention was. We basically had to start them. And then we had to help them at the last row and we had to pull them off the field. Um, if you were actually... In the default game, right, there's really not a whole lot of reason to plow. Um, in the mod games that have soil mod, uh, there is definitely a reason to plow. So it's good to know how to do this with plows and if you were using this with soil mod you'd probably want to come back and clean up this headland uh, I'm not too worried about this part and we're just going to uh, follow up here now with these four cultivators uh, I'm actually gonna take a quick break in the video I didn't realize one of these plows was apparently set to create fields I'm not sure if you noticed that but when it got down to the end and we were doing a couple uh, circles fixing that one traffic jam it, it did a plow off field a little bit, so I'm going to go down there and clean that up before I send the cultivators. And then I'll start the video back up again once we get to that point. Okay, so we are back. I've got everything ready here, and we're going to do this one more time. But this time we're going to do it with four cultivators. And the reason why I'm using four implements is to show you the difference in how you set up your offset uh, when you have an odd number of equipment versus an even number of equipment because it's a little bit different. So in this case we're using these uh, Horsch cultivators which again if we go and look at our store these cultivators are set at 10 meters. This is actually accurate. They, if you go into the first tractor here and unfold it. And then detect the working width that detects at 10 meters. 
But again, 10 meters would be for one. And since we're doing four, we want 40 meters. So I'm gonna use my middle mouse scroll wheel and scroll all the way up to 40. And again, we're on field 15. We're starting in the northwest corner. We're gonna head south. And we're, we'll go ahead and turn this on. Um, I, I think from memory, <laughs> this course, if I don't turn this on, ends down by the, the dairy farm. And so by turning it back on, they'll all drive back up here, which is closer to where I've been parking them. So that's the only reason why I'm going to activate that one. Uh, headland, again, I'm not going to do it. I actually, when I went through and fixed up where the plow went, um, I already did a cultivated headland. Three rows at this end, three rows at that end. So we should be fine now. And then now all we have left to do is set our, well, we gotta generate the course. So there we've got our starting point. And now we just need to go through and copy the course to the other three machines and then set our working widths. And, or not our working widths, but our offsets. So this one's on the right. And let's get out and look at this. So zero is right here, right? So zero is dead in the middle of these two guys. So his working width, his center, is going to be half of his width because zero is at his edge. So if he is 10 meters wide, five meters is right here. This guy is going to be half of his width plus half of his width plus his offset. So we've got five, 10, 15 meters. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna give his lane offset. We're gonna scroll up. So we get 15 meters right. And once again, we're gonna activate symmetric lane change. We'll hop over to the next tractor. Copy the course. And remember this guy's five meters. Activate. Copy the course. Now this one is going to be five meters to the left because it's on the other side of the lane. So now we scroll down. So we get to five meters and activate. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna copy our course. And this one now is 15 meters left. So we're gonna scroll down. And then we're gonna activate. So now we've got all of our courses set. And once again, symmetric lane changing, we wanna start with this inside tractor. If we start with the outside tractor, Every time they go to turn, they're all gonna get stuck in traffic. If we start with the inside tractor, when they go to turn, they won't get stuck in traffic. So we wanna start the first waypoint, drive course. First waypoint, I'll go ahead and let him get in the field. I didn't line these up very well, so they could have a little bit of an issue right here while they're getting started. Drive course. First waypoint. Drive course. First waypoint. Drive course. All right. So now we'll just zoom out and we'll watch these guys cultivate the field. Uh, like the plow, when course play gets to the end, it'll actually lift these cultivators up. It won't fold them, but it'll lift them up at, while it makes the turn. <clears throat> and again, by using the symmetric lane change, 
this guy here, when he makes his turn, he's actually going to skip three lanes before he sets his cultivator back down to head north again. Now if you notice how these tractors are turning and lining up to come down this last row here, it looks like we're actually going to luck out on this one. Uh, with the way these rows ended, unlike with the plowing course, uh, we shouldn't have any traffic issues or collisions or anything of that sort. Uh, those last two tractors there are basically going to just go ahead and recultivate that section of the field that's already been done by these first two here. But as each tractor gets to the end, it should stop, lift the cultivator, fold, and then drive back up to the northwest corner over there to finish off the course. And then uh, I'll park each one of them off in the field over there, and then we'll wrap up the video. Alright, so there you have it. Uh, this concludes the 10th video in my course play series. Uh, in the next video in this series, I'll cover planting with the seeding and fertilizing mode with a refill course. If you're interested in trying out course play, I'll put a link in the description below to the mod website. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, be sure to click the like button and subscribe for more Farming Simulator videos. I'm Kentucky Farmer, thanks for watching.